Welcome to Goldwave version 5.55. Goldwave is the most advanced and complete audio editor in its price range of around $50. It includes all of the common audio editing commands and effects, plus powerful built-in tools such as a batch processor converter, a CD reader, and audio restoration filters. However, it does not burn audio CDs. For that, you'll need CD burner software such as Nero. Goldwave is only available on the Windows platform. To download and install Goldwave, we can go to the Goldwave site, which I have open here, goldwave.com. If we go to the download page, you'll be able to download Goldwave and install it as a demo. You can also purchase from this site. I'd also highly recommend when installing Goldwave to in install the lame MP3 codec. That will allow you to encode and decode MP3 files. You simply copy the lame enc.dll file into the folder where your Goldwave is installed, and then you can encode MP3 files. We'll start this tutorial today by looking at the Goldwave windows. Goldwave initially displays three types of windows, the main window, the control window, and sound windows. I've got two sound windows I've preloaded, and there are two sound windows. The main window contains the menu bar, which you can see here, which is File, Edit, Effect, View, Tool, Options, Window, and Help. It contains toolbars. It contains also the information or status bars about the sound window you currently have open. The main windows keeps all the sounds windows together. It is similar to the main window of a web processor. We can have several document windows open at once. Goldwave can open sounds at once to copy and paste between them. The options toolbar configures and arranges the toolbar buttons. By right clicking on some items in the status bar, you can sh change the format. The control window over to the right contains real time visuals and sound device controls. The visuals display the sound during playback or recording. I'll show you an example now. If we play back this sound, you'll see the visuals below. You can change these visuals by right clicking on them as well and choosing a different type of visual. The d controls up here determine the volume. The first one here is volume. You can set it the, the volume level you desire. The left and right balance. This one here is left right balance. You can click on that as well and go center and the speed which the sound plays. So you can play at normal speed or half speed or double speed and so forth. A set of standard cassette deck buttons up here are used for playing and recording sounds. This one plays, you can rewind or fast forward or you could record a new sound. This button here is the properties button and that's used to to configure the controls, visuals, and devices. Opening a sound file creates a new sound window. So let's do that now. We click on the open button, and that will bring up our open sound. We'll select a sound, we'll click, and we'll open it. It opens a new window. Mine is set to tile the windows automatically. You can open as many sounds as you like, provided there is enough memory and storage, but only one file can be edited or played at a time. Sound windows display a graph of the sound. So if we look at one sound window, we have a graph of the sound here. Mono sounds are shown with a single graph, as you can see there. Stereo, you'll see two two graphs, one for the left channel and the red graph here is the right channel. Currently 
the whole section is highlighted or blue and this is what we call the selection we can change the selection enlarge that by grabbing the 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 uh, cyan line at the beginning and moving it across and you can do that similarly at the end and move that now we have a selection in between the two cyan markers the vertical white line will show and display when we play so if i play that You'll, you would have seen a vertical white line and this is the playback cursor and we can move that cursor anywhere within the timeline simply by coming down to this timeline and clicking and mine currently is set to automatically play from where I click on the timeline below the graphs timeline below this timeline here we have an overview bar it always shows the entire file and provides useful information about what part of the sound is currently being selected and what part of the sound is displayed in the upper graph, this graph here. We can zoom in to a selected area using the view commands. View, you can zoom in. You can zoom, zoom out. We can also use these buttons in the toolbar. So if I want to zoom to all again, if I zoom in, and we can see in the overview bar down here that we're zoomed into this section. We can use this scroll bar here to move forward and backwards. I also have a mouse wheel on my mouse, and I can use that to zoom as well that's an easier way again than even using the toolbar to zoom in and out. If you don't have a, a scroll wheel, a mouse wheel, you can always use the toolbar. Next I'd like to talk about editing and have a, give us an overview of how we can edit sounds. Almost all commands in Goldwave operate on the currently selected part of sounds such as we have here. It is the highlighted part of the sound graph between the two vertical markers, the start marker and the finish marker. Goldwave provides several ways of setting the selection. And this is important to know because so many things depend on choosing the selection and there are many ways of setting this start and end marker. We can use the normal click and drag method used on most windows to, to select an area such as that. I'm using the left mouse button to, to choose the beginning. I'm holding the mouse button and then letting go and that will be my selection. If I click the right mouse button I will get a menu and I can also set the start and finish marker accordingly using the right mouse, right mouse button. If I click in the middle, I can either set the finish or start. If I click right click before the start marker, I can set the start marker only. If I right click after the finish marker, I can set the finish marker. Another way, as I've done earlier in this tutorial, is I can just left click on the, on the start marker and move it. I can do the same as on the end marker, so I use the left mouse button, I hold the mouse button down, then where, when I let the mouse button go, the marker will end up. Another important aspect of editing is to select the channel that you want to edit. Currently here you see that we've both selected the left and the right channel. We can choose one channel by going edit, channel, you can go left, right or both. Let's just choose right here. So here we've selected just the right channel that we're editing and that is selected. So if we want to edit now, we would just edit that right channel and the left channel would be left intact. Now that we know how to select various areas and we know how to zoom in and out, 
we're ready to start editing.